All right, in the past couple of days, we've had Matchless, we've had PV6505s, we've had uh, the uh, Seriatone Dumble copy, the ODS. We've had all these very expensive amps. Let's go to the other end of the spectrum now for a Fender Champion 600. No signal. Let's open that up and see what's going on. Well, I took the tube shield off to see if the tube had any white on it. It did not. I pulled the chassis out in the process. This tube just fell right out. That should not happen. So let me make sure it's in there all the way and that none of the tube pins are bent. If this thing just wasn't all the way seated, the owner would have no signal. All right, this does not want to fall out now. So let's orient this so that the uh, speaker connection can be re remade and we'll see if we have any signal. It's a little bit tricky to do on this. Let me uh, get all this set up for you. And we'll plug a guitar in. Well, it passed the signal. But it's got that big old nasty hum, and that's not right. So let's see why that hum is happening. It could just be a bad 6v6. That's the first thing I'll try, because it is the most cost-effective thing. These amps are very extraordinarily inexpensive, and I charge a professional rate per hour. So it doesn't always really make sense for me to fix these things they tend to fall into the more or less disposable category, sadly. And that's not because I'm an elitist, it's because I have a very specialized area of knowledge and a lot of tools and a lot of people wanting me to work on their amps. And there's a lot of risk involved with this. So, you know, supply and demand. Anyway, let me get this tube swapped out and hopefully that'll be all it is and the owner can dodge an expensive bullet. Well, we got a different uh, preamp tube and a different power tube in there, and the hum remains the same. So let's power it off and take a look at things. Well, I've got real bad news for the owner. Um, it's nothing in the tubes or the preamp. I can mute the, the three grids and the sound stays constant. It's going to be a filter cap, could be part of the rectification circuit, could be a bad transformer. Let me take a few measurements and see if I can narrow it down. And, uh, I mean, it's such a simple little amp, but, um, you know, the time spent diagnosing can exceed the, the value of the amp itself. You know, Fender would not do what I'm doing if this came in under warranty. Fender would just swap that board. That's how it was built. If it's out of warranty, buy another one. Let's see if I can have a ray of sunshine for the owner of this amp, though. This brings us to the text dilemma both from a position of ethics, as far as looking out for the owner, and as self-preservation in a business sense. This amp seems visibly okay. There's nothing obviously wrong, and all the resistors measure okay. I've gone through and done that. At this point, I would wager a bet that it is either one of the four filter caps or one of the transformers. The only way to find out is to change them and see if the problem changes. If it's the filter caps, great. Two hours labor, about $20, $30 worth of parts, you're done. Well, that gets you close to $200 with tax, a little bit over $200. You can buy one of these used working for $250. If I change out the caps and it's not the caps and it's a transformer, it gets to be more expensive. It's hard to tell if it's a transformer because you can't test a transformer for hum if it's not connected to the thing which makes audio. There are tests I could do on this transformer, but those take time. And again, how much time do you want to spend on a Champion when, uh, 600, a, a new one, when you can buy another one that works for now for $250? Second of all, that's all ethics as far as making sure the owner doesn't waste their money. Second of all, I don't want to... Uh, have someone verbally agree to, for me doing potentially $225 worth of work on an amp worth $250, and then there's no incentive for them to ever pay me and pick it up. And so I'm out the time, and it just sits around and never gets picked up. Now, I'm not saying that the owner would do that to me, but it has happened to me and to every other tech I know again and again from now until the last syllable of recorded time. So, both as a... Uh, CYA measure and a, uh, covering the client's A measure, 
I'm going to call the client and explain what I have found. And uh, if he decides to walk away from it, or she decides to walk away from it, I haven't looked at the name on the tag yet. I'm not going to charge them for this time I took here because we got a little video out of it. If he wants me to proceed or she wants me to proceed, I'll report back. But um, they are cool looking toys. I'll just say that. And that's, you, some of you will dismiss that as subjective. And some of you will be saying, amen, brother. And that's the way of the world.